Hey, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I've got to finish up getting my spring garden planted. I've got some seeds to sow today. I have some transplants to put in pots. I'm going to show you how I'm going to grow my Edox tomatoes again this year. So let's go. Have a work day. Well, here's all my starts from this year. These are the ones that did not make it into the garden beds. These are the extras, the backups, the B team. If one of the plants in the bed fails, I've got something to plug in in its place. But I'm not going to waste all these. I'm going to put some of them in pots and containers. And that's one way that you can extend your, your garden production. You don't have to just limit yourself to in-bed production. Grow some of this in pots. So I'm going to pot up some of these peppers and really enjoy a good diversity of peppers this year. Well, I've also got these beds ready to be uh, sown. I've got some seeds we're going to put in. I'll put my cucumbers over here. We put my pole beans over here and we're going to have to build a trellis that won't be today but i want to get those started because the, the weather is nice and warm perfect for sprouting seeds so right here we're going to put some rattlesnake pole beans you guys have told me that i should try that one it's supposed to be a really good one so uh, yeah we're going to put some rattlesnake pole beans in right here so uh, i'll also show you today how to uh, sow your edox tomatoes um, we're going to put our starts out and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I did that already a couple days ago, but I want to put that in this video. Because a lot of people really enjoyed last year's, uh, the way that we grew those tomatoes up a single trellised string. And I want to show you that drop and lean method again this year. But first things first, we've got to get our, our tomatoes in. Let's get to work. I've got me a basic bag of potting soil. I'm pretty much out of any potting soil that I've made myself over the years. And all the soil that's in pots currently that I would recycle have stuff growing in them already. I've got some mint coming up again in this one. I'm just going to let that grow. I've got tomatoes in that depleted soil. Uh, we refreshed that soil. And everywhere I have soil from last year, I've already got something growing in it. So I need to put some new soil in here. Uh, unfortunately, man, potting mix has gone up in price. So I'm not going to be doing as much this year as I normally would. Normally, I'd have pots all over the garden. But I do want to get some of those pepper plants and some of those tomatoes in. So I'm going to just fill up a pot with basic potting soil. It couldn't be easier. Make sure if you're growing in pots that you get potting soil. Don't get topsoil. Don't get garden soil. You want a mixture that is well draining yet retains enough moisture that as it sits and bakes in this pot all day long, it's not just going to evaporate everything out. Or it's not so dense like topsoil that it's going to saturate uh, and turn into basically a hard block where the roots down there won't get any oxygen. So, potting mix. That's what I'm going to use. It is advisable when using a knife to cut these bags. Do not cut your veins. Don't slice your thigh open. I've known some gardeners who have done that. I think this whole bag will go in this pot. This is a standard size. You get down at the Home Depot. Yep, perfect. Now, planting things in pots is not rocket science. I'm just going to make a hole just small enough to get my pepper in there. And I'm going to put the poblano in the bigger one. I love poblano peppers. And they tend to get pretty large. So this larger pot is what we need. You can see that these roots really are getting dense in there. I'm going to break them up a little bit down at the bottom to encourage them to get out into this potting soil. We're just going to plug it in just like that. You don't have to plant these deep. Although you might have to cage a pepper plant if it gets large and leggy. There we go. What we'll do next is water it in, let this settle down. And until I get my label put in here, I'm going to leave the cup weighted down with some soil so I'll know what I have here. What I'll also do is put some mulch around this once the plant starts getting a little bit bigger to help retain moisture in the water to suppress weeds. Weeds always find themselves into these containers. I'll need to mulch these tomato plants as well over here once they start taking off. Alright, one more. It should go without saying, but you never know if you're a new gardener and you don't know. Always make sure your pot has drainage holes in the bottom. That's, uh, that's vital. If you don't have drainage holes, what's going to happen is as it rains and as you water, these pots will fill up and all that stagnant water down at the bottom will starve your roots and drown them out. They'll rot and your plant will not thrive. 
I had a plant, a pepper plant, a couple years ago in a five gallon bucket and it was among about 15 five gallon buckets that I had planted in and that one plant just looked like it wasn't thriving. I went to investigate and sure enough I had forgot to put holes in the bottom and it was drowning. As soon as I drilled holes all that water came out of there and that plant took off. Always make sure you've got some drainage. The second thing you want to consider is when you buy a fresh potting soil like this, a brand new potting soil, to get one that has amendments in it. This stuff from Kellogg's here, it's got compost already in it, it's got bat guano, it's got a lot of good stuff in here. That soil is rich enough for these plants uh, for, for getting established. You don't have to fertilizer, put it, you don't have to put any extra fertilizer in this hole for these plants. They are good as they are. They're good right now. Now this is a mountain roaster. I got these seeds from the Experimental Seed Network. I believe that's what they're called. And uh, yeah, looking forward to this, a roasting pepper. All right, I like to grow a lot of these. I've got some more soil. I might do some more potting up. You can see that a potting mix has a lot of loose organic material in there. It's got some perlite in there. You can see the blackness of the compost. A potting mix looks a lot different than garden soil. Uh, look, looks a lot different than, um, you know, your topsoil. You can see wood fines in there. That's going to be well draining while it's also going to retain moisture. So, yeah, good stuff. If you don't start your own seeds, that's fine. Go down to the store and buy you some plants. But man, I was at the store the other day looking at the plants. At my local grocery store, they got a pretty good garden center. And, uh, wow, the lizards are already out. And I was shocked at the price of the plants. They have gone up. I saw five and six dollar plants that are about this size. While my seed packet for these particular plants, this is a mountain roast, they cost me, you know, two or three dollars. And I get, you know, dozens and dozens of plants out of it. So, yeah. If that's the way you got to go, though, be glad that those companies are out there starting seeds for us. All right, here's another one of those mountain roasters. I uh, think I'm going to like those. Let me show you something right here I'm going to try. Check this out. Here's a pot in which I'm growing two different kinds of parsley. And these are holdovers from last year. They're coming up again. and Well, they made it through the winter. They don't, they don't compete a lot deep. Pepper roots will go deep. So I'm going to take this pot and I put just a little bit of fresh soil on top. I forgot to move my rice hull mulch out of the way, but that's okay. Rice hull can be, it's one of the few mulches that can be integrated into the soil. But I've dug down here, I'm going to plant my pepper plant right here in this same pot. And so we'll have an understory of herbs and we'll have an upper story of cayenne pepper. So that's what we're going to try. Be creative in gardening. Oh, I'm sweating out here, man. Make the most of your space. And your resources and see if you can do some things like this multi-plant yeah so this red flame cayenne i've got several of these growing did wonderful last year for me this pepper plant will put on a lot of production i don't need to top it it's branching naturally um, that's good this is a very branchy type and that's what you want for these little chilies you want a lot of branches that means a lot of production all right, we're done with planting these things. Let's go sow some seeds. Always water in really well when you do any kind of transplanting. That'll help the soil settle. I'm going to be planting these uh, rattlesnake pole beans. I got these from Seeds for Generations. Hey, if you'd like a good source of quality seeds and you want to support a family business that's trying to make a difference in the world, head over to Seeds for Generations using the link in, in, the, in the description box there. That's my affiliate link. You'll be helping out our channel a bit. Great source of seeds. Love this family business. Let's get some of these in the ground. I'm just going to draw me a line. I'm going to plant these about a foot apart so I can get in there and pick beans, maybe about 18 inches. That's the biggest thing about beans. You know what? I'm going to plant them a little bit further apart. I don't like that first trench. I remember trying to get inside the bean patch. So let's go like that. Each one of these rows will have a trellis supporting these beans. And I'm going to do four rows. 
yeah glad I bought two packs one being three inches apart they say that's about four I'm not gonna close up my holes until until I got all my beans in there so I can see how much coverage I've got I have not been satisfied with the pole beans that I've grown in the past they just haven't been uh, I haven't liked them even some of the classics like the uh, old homestead which I believe is also the Kentucky wonder then there's your uh, blue lake bush bean just haven't liked them and I don't have a good explanation why Oh, that's the wrong trench I'm going in I'm going in the, the wrong one just keep these watered and in seven to ten days sometime sooner they'll be up for you the rule of thumb when planting seeds is generally you sow a seed twice the depth as the length of the seed so these seeds are all about a half inch long so we'll sow them one inch deep all right let's water this in with a thick seed like a bean, you want to come back and water twice a day to really get that moisture to penetrate that thick seed. Until you see them come up, keep your water on this bed. With it already being so sunny and warm this week, the top of this soil can dry out. Maybe you could have seen how uh, dry it was when we were making our trench and putting our seeds in. We're going to water this in real well, and we're going to come back later today and water it again. And we're going to repeat that for the first several days. These tomatoes have been in here for a long time, and these are my Edox F1 hybrids. These tomatoes are a hybrid tomato that form cherry tomatoes on very large trusses if you prune them properly and train them up a single, a single, a single string is what I'm going to do. I did this last year. I got tons of tomatoes. So I'm going to choose some of these good plants. I need eight of them, maybe six. We'll, we'll see when we lay them out. These are all fresh F1 hybrids, meaning that they are the first generation of the hybridization process. I have some that I saved from last year. That would make them F2 hybrids, second generation. And those are actually kind of interesting. I want to see what kind of fruit I get if we get genetic regression. So, let's put some Edox. There's an F2. We'll make sure we label our F2. It's got slightly different growth habit than the F1. Interesting. The way I'm going to grow these is the drop and lean method. Drop and lean. I did this last year. That one there. Put this one here. I give about two feet between them. About like that. When we're growing them in this way, we don't have to space them as far apart. All right. And we will trellis them up a single, a single string. So let me get these in the ground first. They need to go in the ground. When I plant tomatoes, I like to put a little fertilizer in the hole. Just a little slow release. This ground right here has been amended in the same way I amended the rest of my beds this year. A little bit of green sand or gypsum to help break up some of the clay that I brought up. But I'm just going to dig a hole here, a pretty deep one. So we need to get these tomatoes deep because they're leggy. Now again, I like this Dr. Earth slow release fertilizer. I'll just put about a half a handful down in there, mix it up with the soil a bit. Take our tomato out of our cup. Yeah, those need to get in the ground. Look at that. Roots are circling like crazy. Just break up the roots a little bit. And backfill. I'm going to keep my cup right here until I can make labels. That'll tell me what I've got. All right, let's keep going. You don't have to worry too much about taking off too many leaves from a, a tomato plant. If you leave several leaves on your tomato plant, it'll do just fine when you plant it deep because all the hairs on the tomato plant have the potential to become roots. 
So what we're going to do is just plant them deep, break up some of this root turn, uh, this uh, these roots that are circling down in here. Drop our plant down in the hole and backfill. One of the keys to success with this particular variety, and with most tomatoes in general, is to fertilize them regularly. I fertilize these every every three weeks with a liquid fertilizer. Uh, I use uh, Neptune's Harvest tomato and vegetable fertilizer. You can use any kind of fertilizer you want, but a liquid one, that's what you want. Something liquid that makes these plants really thrive. I think that was one of the keys to my success last year with these tomatoes, was to fertilize regularly. I set myself a, an alert in Google, Google Calendar, and that helped me to remember that it was fertilizing time. What we're gonna do is, as these grow tall, and once they reach the wire that we're going to install here, once they reach the top of the trellis, we're going to unhook them from the trellis and move them down and lean them over. So that plant will come to this plant's station and the vine will lay along the ground and it will go back up the, the string. Uh, we'll let out more string from our hook. I'll show you all this uh, in a future video, but uh, they'll just circle right here. And these vines, one of them last year was 30 feet long. Um, it had gone down and been curved around the, the little growing area that I had very productive, but you have to prune. I pruned every Monday and it worked well. Again, about two feet spacing. That's all I need here. I'd do more if I wasn't going to train them in the particular way I'm training them. If I was going to trellis them in a cage or something, I'd let them, I'd let them grow a little bit further apart. But since we're going to be putting these, keeping them real skinny, up a single wire. It doesn't really matter how close they are. You can get a little closer like this. <clears throat> I have found a couple of uh, squash vine borer pupa in this soil. I've removed them obviously. But uh, yeah, real interesting to see what those things look like. I'll show you those things and if you see these in your garden, get rid of them. If you see these guys in your garden and you're digging around, take them out. These are the pupa of the squash vine borer, and they're no good. You can see they're getting nice and big and juicy, raring to get out and do damage to my squash. Well, there's two of them to make them go away. Since we planted deep, water these in a little bit more than you think you need to. We want to make sure that water gets down to the root zone. You know, it's just too hot right now. It's the air temperature is not hot, but the sun is shining directly on me. I think I'm going to wait another time, maybe when the shades over the garden, to sow these cucumbers. Yeah, I've done enough work for today. I got other things to do. I'm not sure if you watch all my videos, but if you do, you probably saw my temperamental citrus trees. They dropped all their leaves, but I told you they would put them right back on. And you can see they are doing so. This is a variegated lemon that blossoms all over it, but now it's putting on leaves. And then over here, this guy had dropped all its leaves too. And you can see, no problem. Now I fertilized my strawberries three days ago with a fish emulsion type fertilizer and they responded well. Look how green they are. They just lushed up. That's awesome. The bees love this borage. That's one of the reasons I plant it, is to be a pollinator attractor. But it's also beautiful. Probably my favorite flower in the garden. The dill is in bloom. Hey, let me show you Samson. Okay, this is my daikon radish that I grew in the hole of my cinder block. And if you've watched my channel, you've seen we can't get this thing out. I pulled and pulled and yanked all the, the green foliage off of it in trying to get it out. It grew all this back. In fact, it's about to bolt. So we're going to let it bolt and get some seed from it. But since it wouldn't come out and it's got this long hair, a, uh, somebody who watches my channel suggested we name it. And we're going to call it Samson. Samson, long hair, super strength. 
this guy is going to come out of here eventually. I think that this is going to do like Samson and break this brick. Our commenter, okay, I'm going off of just sheer memory now. I've got so many commenters, I might get your name wrong. Is it Mary West Carruthers? I'm going to look it up and see. And the next time I mention you, I'll get it right. I know there was a Carruthers in there. Yeah, so that was her suggestion to name it Samson. And that is Samson, so we'll kind of follow Samson throughout the growing season and see if he can't bust that concrete block. That would be cool. Well, spring is here in earnest. Getting our beds all planted up, getting the things wrapped up for spring growth. That's great. Fruit trees are starting to pop. Stuff's coming up. Seeds are sprouting. I got some beets over there that are just poking above the surface now. In fact, I need to get some water on them. Can't forget. And all my edox tomatoes are in and ready for me to build my structure here over them to hold the strings. I'll show you that in another video or you can go watch my old one. Um, yeah, we're not growing as many of them because they were such heavy producers. I wanted to grow some other varieties as well. Last year I had half of my long bed with those edox tomatoes. And uh, man, I had so many tomatoes I didn't know what to do. I still have tomatoes in the freezer from, from those plants. But it's starting to look like a spring garden now. I guarantee you in a month or two, these plants are going to be nice and bushy. We're going to start enjoying some of these tomatoes and peppers. That's mainly what I'm growing this year, tomatoes and peppers. This year I thought, you know, I'm going to grow what I like to grow. Got some squashes in here and there and we'll pick up some plants that uh, maybe fill in some spots here and there i need some basil my basil seed didn't come up so yeah spring thanks for joining me working in the garden today i hope you learned something uh, i hope you see that it's pretty easy to grow a garden and it's not rocket science you can do it hey happy gardening to you talk to you next time bye bye